morning. Today, it's a bit rainy, so I'm not gonna get some actual progress done today. But today's part two of the project of love, and it's going to be changing the clutch on this dog. I was gonna get Fat Rick to change it, but he was a bit pricey and he was being a funny about doing it. And every time I asked him, he kept pushing it back, pushing it back, pushing it back. So I'm doing it myself. So right now the weather's crap. I've got the clutch and that on order that'll be here this afternoon. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and get it up in the air as high as I can on the jack. I'm gonna get an axle stand either side to support the body. Um, and yeah slowly work from there as and when i can today i'm gonna crack on with bits and bobs and what have you now i've never done a clutch on one of these um i've heard that you need to have a special uh self-adjusting clutch at tool or something so i've ordered that that won't be here till tomorrow um but that's gonna all work out all right anyway so yeah it's not exactly gonna be an hour two but you might get some information that might help you yeah. The number one thing before we start. Ah, bang me head. Disconnect the battery. Number one job before we start. Because we don't want to upset nothing. Because we're going to be unplugging all sorts of crap. And um, yeah, um, I'm expecting this to take me a couple of days. Especially with the weather like it is. Now, in all fairness, even on my back on the drive, this could probably be done in a 10-hour day-ish. But, yeah, I don't want to do it in the first place, so I'm going steady, Eddie. We'll see how we go. So, I'm going to go get out my jack, get out of the axle stands, we'll get her in the air, and then we'll bring you back. Right, that look, took a little bit more messing around than I wanted. But... Finding the placement of the axle stands is going to be quite critical here because we can't put it anywhere near the subframe area here because we need to take a lot of this off and we've got to lower the subframe on that side. So I've gone for a jacking mount here. It's actually got a big plastic seal on it and I was kind of worried it was going to break and but it all seems all right. Don't mind the slab underneath, that's to level things. The same again here. So, as you may have noticed or may not, it's raining. So this is probably as far as I'm going to get for now. Um, we'll have to see what happens when the rain stops. But next job will be both wheels off. All this in the arch liner and stuff out. Um, see what we need to get out under the bonnet and then work away from there. And so it's not really going to be an out too. So, wish me luck. Oh yeah, parts are on order. Uh, they'll be this afternoon, 250 quid. That's three piece clutch kit and the oil for uh, to put new oil in the gearbox. So it's not too bad. A little bit more pricier than I wanted, but that will have to do. Okay, right, so it's actually the next day because it pissed it down all day yesterday. I'm not looking forward to laying in that, but that's going to be the score Georgie does today. First off, we're under the bonnet here and we're looking at what we're going to need to remove to get out shit, basically. Um, yeah, let's have a look. Right, as you can see, this is going to have to come off so I can see a bit better. This is going to have to be removed. Air box. Or the bottom of the airbox mine's gonna have to be removed. Start motors there, which is nice and simple, which I quite like. That's quite nice, I quite like that. Um, according to what I've been reading, we only need to drop the subframe a bit on this side. Um, we have got a bit of a, a mount up here as well that might hold us a bit. Yeah, I'm going to have to have a little look around and figure stuff out. But yeah, we need to clear some space here, basically, to see where we're going with that, because I'm not entirely sure. <sighs> I've got to take this wheel off. I've got to take the other wheel off. I've got to take all the plastic out from under the um, inner arch here. 
We want to separate the ball joint. We want to remove the drive shaft. Same on the other side. Um, we want to get under here. There's going to be some sort of um, plastic shit tray, um, underbody tray. Um, that's going to want removing. And then we're going to be able to figure out whatever else we need to do now. I did pick up the parts over yesterday. Um, so we've got all that ready. I've got the special tool that's uh, for the self-adjusting clutch apparently. That's uh, coming today, Amazon Prime Light. So hopefully we can get this apart and figure out where we're going from there. But um, apparently the easiest way is out the bottom. I'm just hoping I've got enough clearance to do that. Otherwise well, I could end up in a right uh, predicament but we'll see um it's not supposed to rain today but it's supposed to be really windy so you'll have to bear with me on the old sound quality there's not like a do about that at this point i'd like to give a special thank you to whichever cunt in its lifetime decided to rivet this to the inner wing thanks a lot you're really making my life easy right now all right the correct way to remove that would have been to have drilled the heads off them and blah 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 blah. As you can see, that's good to that. All right, yeah, the old gearbox. We've got another piece of plastic stuff here. What's this? Some sort of shield that needs to come off too, and it would seem. All right, you should carefully put all your bits. In containers and stuff and label it and all that so you don't get confused like I'm doing as you can see right I did read online that sometimes it's easier just to remove this leg entirely but I can't see how that's gonna be too much of an issue I mean we could remove the caliper and the disc or what um, we could move stuff out this way when we uh Split the ball joint to get the drive shaft out, and then, hmm, yeah, I shouldn't. If this comes down far enough, this shouldn't be too hard a job. I may not be high enough off the ground though, um, which may prove to be an issue. So I might have to reconsider my jacking positions. But for now, I'm going to carry on removing, trim things, and what have you, till I can get somewhere where I can figure out an actual plan. So, I'm going up here now, start removing stuff here. Oh, yeah, I've got to get the wheel off the other side, so I should probably do that. I'll quickly whip that other wheel off on the other side there, and uh, I'm making a start on up here. So far, I've moved the MAF and the air filter. Yours won't look like that. Uh, the box, uh, lower half, is just Hold on while these push connector things, which is nice. Got to remove this to get this out of the way. Got to remove this to get this out of the way. I think I can work my way around all the rest of that. Um, you can see here we've got the gear selector cables. Um, yeah, there's a bodge. Somebody's bodged that before. That's one to keep note of. Maybe that was getting caught or stuck or I don't know. But anyway, there's the gear selector cables. Uh, there's the clutch, hydraulic line there. I have to clamp this off with something, undo it there. Um, usually it's like a split pin and then pull it out. Uh, but I've got to keep make sure I don't lose the rubber doodah that causes the seal on that there, because I've done that before. Uh, my mate Fu actually helped me out of that little predicament, uh, which is quite, uh, quite handy. Alright, so anyhow, so we've got that dodgy connector to look at. We've got some... Well, there's going to be a mount for them cables. Hopefully that's like one thing, we can take that off as one. Um, where is the gearbox mount? Well, that's aim out, well, that's the front of the engine. Um, I would have expected one on the side here, but I don't seem to have one. 
Um, that's strange. There may be one down there. And this big one at the top of the block here. That looks like somebody's put a shim in. I don't know. That doesn't look right. It works. It works. It works. Anyway, back to this. Yeah, we've got to get the drive shafts out as well, which is going to be a case of uh, I'm doing the bolt on the bottom ball joint, split the bottom ball joint. I'm doing this centre nut here. Then we can move this away and that way. Get a pry bar, pull the. Oh, actually, we need to drain the fluids out of the gearbox first before we pull the drive shafts because I don't want to make loads of mess everywhere because I've got to lay down there. Right, that's what I should do. I should go see if John will do that for me. Well, this shit plate I haven't been off in a while. Oh, look at me. <sighs> All right. I've seen this is a gearbox mount. As we saw from the top, but I couldn't be sure what it was. Looks like someone's been rallying this through a field. But, never mind. We'll worry about stuff like that later. Anyway, um, this all looks fairly simple wonder here. The removal of the subframe business has got me a little bit concerned. We reckon you only need to lower down one side on the internet. I can't see how that's going to be enough. And, well, to be fair, you need more angle on the engine and stuff as well to come down, so we need to go back up the top and have a look there as well. I think. Well, as you can probably hear, the weather's not very clever. It's windy as fuck. Keeps rolling in the showers. It's now three o'clock. I'm covered in shit. I've had enough. So far, it's Volvo 1 Me 0. Um, I'll give you an update on where I am on it, but I'm about done in for the day. So I'm gonna go and edit this up and post it on uh, the old YouTube. And uh, yeah, see where we go from there. So I'll be back at it tomorrow, probably. My um, clutch tool won't be here till between three and eight this evening, I can't remember. So yeah, if even if I got it out, I couldn't finish it anyway, so. If you like the video, consider subscribing all that bollocks. If not, who cares? Um, but yeah, I'll get this edited for you lot and then uh, I'll probably be back tomorrow. So, uh, till next time. Cheers.